everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to recommend three books for each of the categories for nonfiction November. These are books that I've read in the past few years that I've really enjoyed and I think fit the themes and the words that were selected for nonfiction November. I will come back with my TBR for it very soon as I'm currently waiting for a few things on hold. But for now, I thought that a recommendations video will be fun, especially because I feel like I don't do a lot of themed recommendations videos and that's something that I would like to change about my channel. So let's talk about some nonfiction books that I really enjoyed that I think you might like. The first word is time and I have three books. The first one is This Is All I Got. This book I selected for this because it focuses on the time period leading up to the end of a pregnancy and to the delivery of a baby and then the very short time period after the fact where the person that we are following has to find a new place to live. So she is taking part of this um, charity house where pregnant women live together until they give birth and it's focused on this very particular time in her life where she basically has to navigate the welfare system, get herself back into school, and provide for her child as well. This is a great journalistic look at what it's like to be a young woman in a gentrifying city with much more limited resources than were available years prior. A very smart person trying to navigate this bureaucracy and having a hard time with it. I really enjoyed this book especially for the style of the writing. It is told by a journalist who follows the person throughout this whole time and basically writes everything that happens in its entirety. The second book that I want to recommend is My Time Among the Whites. So it has the word time in it and this is a collection of essays by the author Janine Capo Crusette who is a Latina professor. Her experience growing up in South Florida and then moving to this place in the country that is very very different from where she was raised. I really love this book because of how much it resonated with my experience growing up. Looking at where the author grew up is very close to where I grew up so a lot of the things that she talks about and mentions are things that I know from my own life and this is just a great book that explores race and identity. A book that really punches you in the gut, I think, and I definitely would recommend it. Third, I would recommend Boomtown, which is a history of Oklahoma City. So it basically goes through time from the beginning of the founding of it as a city um, to what it is now. And this is a very humorous book about all of the reinventions that Oklahoma City has had with itself to try to become this metropolis that rivals New York City and Los Angeles and of course you know that hasn't happened. A lot of it has to do with the sports teams in the area and also with what the public figures and elected officials have decided to do to try to bring more acclaim to their town. The second word is movement and for that I picked three other books. The first one is Antisocial. This book looks into the movements that are currently happening with the alt-light and alt-right. So the author looks into these people and what they believe and how they are trying to accomplish their beliefs and their goals and it's a very eye-opening book to show you how they are using the social media infrastructure that has been created by techno-utopians like Mark Zuckerberg etc and how that is being used to wage this culture war for them to be more well known and for them to reach more people. It's a very aggravating but very interesting look at this world and I think Andrew Morantz does a great job at explaining why uh, they are so toxic and he also explains why giving them any attention on social media is not very great. The second one is the 57 bus and I picked this because it it is a crime that took place in movement, so it is a crime that took place while on a city bus. It's also a look at gender and race and restorative justice, which not necessarily something I like all the way agree with, but I can understand aspects of it and how it could work for certain situations. What I think I learned the most from reading this book is about the gender identity of the person who is a victim, how they deal with their family and how their family understands them, and I found that really really fascinating. Definitely would recommend. It's a book that I read very quickly. And then last but not least, I want to recommend Dark Room by Lila Quintero Weaver, and this is a book about the civil rights movement and desegregation 
segregation in Alabama. So Lila Quintero Weaver writes from her own perspective as an Argentinian immigrant who moved to Alabama during the 60s and kind of saw all of these things happening right in her own front yard. It's fascinating to see it from that perspective because she's really not a part of either of those groups. She's not really a part of white Americans who have lived here and also not a part of black Americans who have lived here. I really loved it because of the illustrations. It's a graphic memoir. Definitely really enjoyed this book. The third word is discovery and one book that I have raved about this year is Why Fish Don't Exist. So this is a book about someone who discovered many fish species. It's also a book about self-discovery of the author. The author is a journalist and she's kind of taking this idea of who this person was who discovered all of these animals and led this really interesting life and also using that as a metaphor for her own life, the situations that she's been in when it comes to her family and when it comes to her sexual orientation it's really beautifully written and I think that is what has stuck with me is how much I felt connected to her from her writing. There's something really sweet and melancholy about her writing and I, I really enjoyed that book. The second one that I want to talk about is The Lady from the Black Lagoon and this looks into the life of Millicent Patrick who was the person who designed Creature from the Black Lagoon. That's one of the most revered from monster movies. I am not interested at all in monster movies or movies of that sort, honestly, but this is just a very interesting and entertaining look at this woman's life as the author is trying to learn more about her, going to museums and trying to interview people and trying to really get to the hard facts of who Millicent Patrick was and her real legacy in Hollywood. I would recommend this to anyone who enjoys funny, entertaining memoirs. It also has a mix of the author's own memoirs. The last one I'll least for discovery, I want to recommend Claudette Colvin, Twice Toward Justice. This is one of my favorite nonfiction books that I've ever read. I would recommend the young adult adaptation of it, not the children's version because the young adult adaptation has a lot more information. This looks into the life of Claudette Colvin, who was a person that was surrounded by civil rights history, and Claudette Colvin was actually, before Rosa Parks, did not give up her seat on the bus and Rosa Parks situation was more of a planned act of defiance and a planned civil disobedience that had been seen before. So this interviews Claudette Colvin, her childhood and her growing up and why she didn't really fit into the idea of what a civil rights activist should look like or be like. I found it really really fascinating and it's a great book that I definitely recommend. Last but not least is the word buzz and for all of these I ended up picking books that had buzz to them, not necessarily any bug books just because I don't read that many. And so the first one is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. This is a book that I loved when I read earlier this year. It's a really sad book but it's also a book that is so strong in the creative output that it has. Basically using motifs and symbols in literature and then seeing this relationship through every single one of those symbols and motifs and I just found it so fascinating how she took that idea and really told the story that was so full. I'm glad to hear the story as well because as Carmen Maria Machado says many times in the book, when you think about queer stories, you don't really want to think about queer abuse stories, but she still think it's very important to be honest that these things actually happen. I really, really valued this book a lot and I love the writing. I love the execution. The second one that I want to recommend is Open Book by Jessica Simpson. This is a book that I didn't really expect that much out of and then completely blew me away. It is a celebrity memoir of Jessica Simpson's life, but it's also a very genuine and very vulnerable account of her life. It's all about her childhood and growing up as a pastor's daughter. Definitely some of the most interesting aspects of this book is her relationship with the people that we saw her grow up with, including Nick Lachey and John Mayer. Seeing the relationships told through her point of view and not through the media's point of view. She grew up during a time when this was all related to us through tabloids and through reality television in its infancy. It's also really valuable to me to see how she has struggled through different aspects of her life, including grief and her weight 
and substance abuse. I think she's a really lovely person. She's not a perfect person, but she comes across as a really kindred soul. Last but not least, I want to recommend Dragon Hoops. This is another graphic memoir slash graphic history by Jean Luan Yang. It was one of my most anticipated reads this year and it really lived up to the hype for me. If you like sports stories, if you like stories about identity, and if you like stories about how your upbringing affect who you are as a person and who you surround yourself with, it looks at this high school basketball team as they are learning how to work together and try to win the championship for their state. It's Jean Luang Yang following the coaches and the kids all around, learning their stories. Jean Luang Yang also discusses a lot about the creative process of him writing this book and all of the other things on the table for him when it comes to his career in this book and I also really enjoyed learning about that aspect too. So I definitely recommend Dragon Hoops. So there it is, you have 12 new recommendations of books that I've really enjoyed in the past few years that meet the nonfiction November words. If you read any of these, let me know in the comments or if any of these intrigued you, also let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!